Hi there, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name's Catherine, in case you're new here. I make journals out of old books that I find um, that are going to be chucked for various reasons, or they're at the thrift store, and, and again, uh, nobody wanted them. Lost and forlorn books. I, I make them into cool journals. I think they're cool. Anyhow. Um, we are working on um, this book, which very soon will no longer be known as the Mansions of Philosophy, but rather will be known as the beauty of uh, Edith's world, <clears throat> secretly. But uh, we finished the spine together the other day, and oh my goodness, I am just so happy with how this spine turned out. The drama is just yummy. And I'm just, I'm really, really happy. I'm happy that the red worked out. I'm happy I didn't have to cover it. I'm happy that the labels are perfect for it. And now it's time uh, to cover up this and, um, if you're new here and this is your first time watching it, I started to read the original text block and the author clearly had a poor um, vision of women and their capabilities. <coughs> so, <laughs> hopefully he became enlightened later in life with his philosophies. <sighs> okay. The, the book will now become enlightened with the beauty of Edith. Um, so I went ahead and um, made a, a plate of this beautiful old oak tree that Edith did. Um, they say it's one of her earliest works that they found. It's a grove of oak trees. Look at all the twisty and gnarly they are. Wouldn't that really be ideal for a fo cover on a forest lore book? I'm so glad I've got more copies of this book left so that I can use this again somewhere. Uh, it will be going right here very soon, actually. And, uh, and then we will be putting a book plate here uh, again very soon. Um, it's, uh, I'm temporarily, I haven't had a book for a while that has had a different name than what it was, but I've been calling it an Edith All Sorts. <laughs> and, uh, I, so I have to make a new, I need to make a new, uh, label to put inside. But as ever, my labels for anyone who ends up with one of my books. My labels can always be removed, flipped over, and uh, you can make your own label. Um, and then if you don't like that one, you can flip it over again and again, make your own. You get three more options when, uh, when you get one of my books that has a, a book plate on the cover. So, uh, I want to finish the edges of this. I have sanded it. I, I cut it with a blade and then I clip the little corners off and I use my sandpaper block. I really love this one um, for this work. First of all, it's very comfortable in my hand. Home Depot, not very expensive. You can replace the paper very easily by loosening that bolt that's right in there. It just, it eases this away a bit and you just slide in a new piece of sandpaper whenever the time comes that you need it. It's not very often. This pointy edge is nice to get into crevices and this round edge is nice for other reasons uh, when you're sanding. And a sand block is just... Once you get used to using one at your art desk, you'll wonder how you ever made it without a sand block to make something like this feel 
as professional as if this was like a store-bought coaster. It, um, the edges just feel really nice rather than that really sharp edge that would have been left had I just used um, my craft blade to cut it. So, uh, and again, these corners, it, this is way too thick, at least for my corner chompers. And I have a few different kinds and just not happening. And I find it's a much easier way to get an even corner rather than trying to cut it with scissors. You, you won't even get, um, this is just the nicest way to get a round corner. Just clip, a little tiny clip of the corner and then use your, use your sandpaper block and just round it and then top down, run it off the edge like a waterfall. So I was thinking about putting a tiny bit of gold on here, but I don't want to now. I do want it to be a little more, um, subdued so we're just but i do want to darken it a bit because you can see the layers this is just chipboard um it was actually from an old book it was so old and falling apart i was able to peel off not only the book uh the fabric on the one side but the paper and papers from the inside and was left with this. So you can see the raw edge from this uh, page out of the, out of um, the Edwardian Lady, which we are using as our ephemera reference, our ephemera source for this book. So um, I have got, I'm using Acorn archival ink acorn let's move this because you know me i'll drop it face down on it and uh, uh and i'm just going to darken up that side the sides and uh again just makes it look like makes it look more professional than that, that good old Catherine in Canada made it. <laughs> People might not suspect that some little lady up in Canada made this book. <laughs> you never know. I hope you're all doing well. We got another sunny day here where I live. They have changed their mind. The weather, oh boy, it just changes on a dime. The weatherman can't seem to, the weather person can't seem to make up their mind <clears throat> whether it's going to be warm or whether it's going to be cold or <sighs> what's that poem when we were children? Whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot or whether the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> So, so that's all nice and dark. Darkness recedes. So you tend to hopefully will look more for um, that beautiful illustration as opposed to uh, looking at the sides and going, oh, well, that was just glued on a piece of cardboard, which it was. But we don't need to announce that to the world. Now I do want to just give it a little, I mean, come on, just a little bit. And then I have a surprise for you. <sighs> Very exciting. Hubby is out getting groceries. In addition to vacuuming, the man will go get groceries. I know, I know, I keep bragging, but 
The man is bragworthy. He's uh, he's a wonderful guy. So he's off getting groceries. Oh my goodness, the lemon dog, <laughs> as she is now being referred to, um, twisted her leg yesterday while playing in the backyard. I, she was chasing a ball, and all of a sudden I heard a yelp, yelp. Arr, 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 arr. She was limping and wouldn't put any weight on it. And I thought, oh my goodness, she's broken her leg. These... Uh, this vet's office is going to start thinking I'm abusing my dog. <sighs> Anyhow, so fortunately the crying stopped as soon as I held her. She was very happy that mommy was holding her. And I squeezed up and down her leg and it, um, there was no, I felt like if there was a bone broken, that would have sent her over the moon and it didn't so then i checked her paw and opened up all the pads which is why it's handy if you've got a new dog even if you've got an older dog get them used to having their paws manipulated and don't let them pull away they they tend to like to pull away and get them used to it if they snuggle them beside you while you're watching tv play with their paws it, uh, it helps when you least expect it, when you've got a dog that will cooperate and let you play with their paws. Anyhow, I checked her paws to make sure that it wasn't that she was yelping because she had stepped on something and it had gone up inside her foot. And no, her paws were all fine. She hadn't torn a toenail because I did have a dog that ripped a toenail almost completely off once. Oh, that was awful. Our border collie bingo. Um tore one of her toenails off. I want it low. I don't want to put it up high there. I want it just barely covering that black. There. Um, anyhow, she was still limping when we came in the house favoring it and holding it up. If she was standing or sitting, she was holding holding it up like this. Thank goodness we have a wonderful veterinarian's office. There's a whole bunch of them that work in there. It's an animal hospital. We used to have a little zoo here in my town. It became quite famous because it did have some animals that had no business living in Canada. And Bob Barker, the guy from The Price is Right, the old guy, and PETA um, actually started uh, we became world famous because they started protesting our zoo and uh, the animals that uh, that shouldn't be there. Like, for example, we had an elephant at the zoo. And where I live, it's just, it had no business. It was, a, it was just a cruel thing to have this elephant at this zoo. On the other hand, it was quite humorous to give her exercise. They literally would her handler would take her for a walk around town and if anyone who didn't know my town <laughs> and you're driving through and you see someone just walking down the highway <laughs> taking their elephant out for a walk it really happened here <laughs> and uh, anyhow our vet's office is the vet's office that used to take care of all the animals that were at that zoo so there's a lot of them there. They're very, very well educated on all kinds of, all kinds of critters, whether they've got scales or fins or, or gills or fur. Um, they're wonderful. I love them all. So whenever I phone in with the latest emergency, they'll just say, well, come on over. We'll squeeze you in. And they did. And they think it's just, she's either pulled a muscle or a little sprain. Um, so they've given her a little, um, she can have a little bit of pain medication if she wants. And she is, she, no walks, can't go on any walks, no running around the yard. When she goes out to do her business, she has to be on a leash and taken brought right back in the house. No jumping up on the 
She is allowed up on the couch now if she asks permission. Um, the vet said no jumping allowed up onto the bed. Well, she's not allowed on her bed yet. Um, <clears throat> so the couch has been a bit tricky for her, but not too bad. She's Because we taught her to ask permission first, she's not allowed to just freely jump on the couch. That sure makes that easier. Um, here we go. Let's get this. Anyhow, so we are to have her take it easy for the weekend. The vet said she will phone me on Monday to see how she's doing. She, she didn't think she needed an x-ray at the time. And uh, and she certainly seems a little better today. She's, still fa she's definitely still favoring it. Oh, and no stairs. So I'm back to carrying this dog up and down the stairs. I'm going to use three and one. I want it really well adhered. I will be spreading it um, just around the edges so it doesn't blop out. If it does blop out, I will not smear it, even though everything in me wants to smear it to go <gasps> oh, and wipe it away. Do not wipe it away. Just leave the blop there because you can peel it off later. So then I'm just going to take this and thin it. Thin it out. I don't mind it being bloppy in the center. But these edges, no blobs. Is it bad that I'm starting to like the smell of that? <laughs> I don't like it as much as my gilding wax. Oh, if they made perfume that smelled like my gilding wax, that would be divine. Anyhow, yeah, so she's, uh, she doesn't quite understand why she's, Why she's a little bit slower. Let's get these out of the way. Because you know me and my luck. Alright, I'm going to pull this down a bit. I'm going to center it over the black, but then lift it up a bit and put it over like that. Oh my goodness, we're good. I don't see any blobs. Yes, there's a smear there, but that was already there. And I tried to clean that off and it was saying, no, no, I've been here for 97 years and I'm staying for another 97 years. You're not moving me now, lady. Okay, so this is going to be put aside with a brick on it or a rock and a smooth surface. Hmm, what have I got that's smooth? Let's use a little Edith and a rock. And we will put this aside, and then I'll show you what else I'm working on. Oh, you know what I should do is I should... Hold on. 
Let me think of these things later. I should just put the text block back in it. Keep that. Protect that beautiful little spine. Okay, so Edith back on top. Rock over that. Off to the side. So a very, very clever um, subscriber commented that there really is enough in that one book. Oh, I should have been, I should have waited a little longer. That was still really super sticky. There really is enough in this one book to fill two journals. So guess what? <laughs> We're gonna make two! Yay! So I hunted over all my books and at first I was looking for a book that was similar to the red one. I couldn't find anything similar to the red one and then I thought why am I trying to do a repeat? I don't want to do Pete and repeat or Kate and duplicate or all that. Um, so I like this book. It's really old and nasty looking and it's actually I think only from the 40s. It's one of my favorite pulling books for 1941 um, to put in. It's got really beautiful uh, drawings for gardening. I mean look at all these. Let me let me come back down close. Hold on. There we go. All right. Hopefully we are running. Ugh. I'm going to pause again and make sure I'm running. All right. Um, isn't this nice? I, I love using this. So, and just because I'm going to use the cover, it doesn't mean I won't continue to use the... Uh, I won't continue to use the rest of the text block in journals because I really do enjoy it. I'm going to have to lift up my camera because I need to um, I need to turn this book upright. So hold on again. Okay, so what I need to do. Now that I know the correct term, we have to pull this text block out of this book. Um, so I need craft knife. Really want to be careful. the The spine's going to need work. It is really, really um, floppy and transparent. This one's not going to be as easy as the red book was, but it and it's not as thick. It's it's not a two inch spine. But it's got wider pages, so it's going to give me different options, which I like. I'm doing this carefully. I really love the end papers, so give me a second and I'll show you the end papers because they're beautiful and I think they would be quite appropriate for the kind of book. Oh boy, I hope that wasn't the spine that just came out. Please don't get the spine. Please don't get the spine. Whew, it's not the spine. I saw this chunk come off. Right there. Had a teensy little panic. <laughs> teensy. Okay. So. Um, pencil. Oh, 
1941. I have a list of all my favorite books, but it's never convenient when it's time for me to um, start naming my pages. So let me show you. Like, look at how nice. It's like an old English garden with a statue in it. I can see I've written here, 47. I wonder if I've got the wrong date there. Let's take a look and see. I might have presumed. Oh yeah, look, 47. 47, not 41. Now, I want to erase that. I'm glad when I use a really soft eraser. Let's come down closer. Do you see here where I've Where I've written very gently in pencil. That was in my earlier days of creating journals. Back in the days where I thought all I ever wanted to do for the rest of my life was little golden book journals. <laughs> for the first little while of making junk journals, it was all I ever wanted to do, but I still loved putting old pages, old interesting pages in. So I always assumed that this book would just simply be a cutting book. And here it is. It's going to become a journal. So happy for you. So um, I'd like to be able to leave these end papers in. They're so pretty. The only challenge that that presents to me is... Um, I don't trust these glued in. Uh, now I know what I want to put on the cover because when, when a book presents me with a beautiful blank cover, oh, I guess I better go back out again. There we go. When a book presents me with a beautiful blank cover, usually you know, as with the red one, I want to put something, a beautiful piece of painting, artwork uh, on it, and, uh, and then a book plate. In this case, I think I'm going to have to do a book label, which fortunately, um, because I broke one of my old, old rules, I've got this, this yummy book that I'm in love with. I'm surprised it doesn't go under my pillow every night. Um, this painting was done by Edith. It's from the book, so it's I'm allowed. And I just think it will be perfect on the cover. And uh, she, apparently she did this painting in 1908 and gave it to um, her friend Bella as a wedding present. So I like that it's got a border collie on it. And a special place in my heart for border collies. So I will be um, cutting this out and putting it on. I may bring it in just a bit. Just, I don't want to lose her signature. Here she's just signed it Holden. Oh, I hear you, but I've still got a little time because I paused a bit, so be patient. Um, so that's the plan, and then maybe, maybe I will use, um, maybe I will use one of these you know, a simple plain one so that the new owner can write on it. Like that would be nice, that one right there. And that way I can just glue it right on and I won't have to put um, a brad right through the cover. With this metal, I, I just, I don't trust glue to hold the, this metal in place. Whereas, although I do like to use brads, 
on sometimes when I put artwork on I just love brads mostly for the aesthetic value I think they look pretty um, it doesn't need it this is paper on paper that will hold and uh, it won't be a problem so and that same with this this will hold I'll still I'll still mount it a little bit um, either on top of something or frame it in some way um, and then the this poor poor <laughs> poor sad spine which I'm in love with grungy it is oh that's that's yummy grunge i can't explain why some grunge i look at and think oh i've got to help this and some grunge i look at and think oh, that's just yummy grunge and this is yummy grunge and so um I, I need to decide what i'm if i'm going to raid my label book or whether i'm going to raid my fabric that's got this on it and maybe run it around the edges um don't know yet so it might look very different the next time we get together so there we go so now we know there's going to be uh two two journals in my challenge as if i didn't give myself enough of a challenge there's going to be two of them oh red and green <laughs> Christmas in April. Um, so I'm going to put you back under the rock. You're going to crawl back under your rock. And I am going to go help my sweetheart unload some groceries. And uh, we're back to carrying the dog up and down the stairs just for a couple of days and give her leg a little rest. But it's it looks like she's just she's pulled a little muscle or a little strain there and uh and all is well <sighs> all right take care thanks for joining me um if you're still here after all this time i hope you'll click on like down below youtube likes it better when you guys like them and uh it shows up in my statistics and it helps it, it helps pay for how ridiculously expensive this glue is i'll be honest with you it really does <laughs> three in one glue up here in canada is near about twenty dollars a bottle now for us so that uh and i don't have thirty thousand followers <laughs> so so i'm counting on you <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed i hope you'll think about it um i don't do really formal tutorials but uh, I like to think that you learn something as I explain what I'm going through when I'm transforming old books into something that will be useful and fun and look really cool take care have a great rest of your day and um, we will get together very soon bye